Hi, today we're going to, be going to be talking about display and visibility on your web page. Now, when it comes time to making your page, again and again, I'm going to tell you that laying out where you want things to be is key to a really effective page. And one of the things you need to remember is that every element we look at is basically a box. And the box model is something we're going to cover in a future lecture. But before we get to the specifics, I just want to talk about some details. Because how the display on your different element works affects all the neighboring elements on your page. So before we begin, I just want to remind you, every element on your page is a box. Just think of it that way. And display is how you can decide whether the boxes should be next to each other, underneath each other, and different things like that. So when we talk about display, there are some common values that pretty much everyone uses, or they're just a default, so you've been using it without even knowing it. Elements that are inline will sit next to other elements. They take up just enough width and height and no more when you're putting them on the page. So I kind of think of these as my good children in the minivan elements. It's fine if I want to put three kids in the back seat. They're not going to elbow each other. They're just fine. They're, getting, they're going to get along. The other type of display is block. And what block does is it forces a line break in between your elements. So again, with my example, I've got one kid who really just can't sit next to anybody else. I have to put them in their own row. Even though she's really tiny and she doesn't take up that much space, she has a whole row all to herself when we're driving in the car. What's nice about block elements is while they take up all the horizontal width and just enough height, you can go in and you can set a height and a width on those elements. So even though it's block and you've reserved a whole width of the page, you can say, but I really only want it to be 40 pixels or half the page or something like that. So with inline, it takes up just enough space and you're not able to change that. You don't get to say, I want it to be bigger or smaller. If it's inline, that's all you get. With block, you have a little bit more flexibility, but you do have the problem that you're reserving a lot of space. So of course, what we came up with is this idea of something that takes the best of both. And this is inline block. Elements that have display inline block are going to be the same as inline and in that they can be next to each other, but they'll also accept height and width. So if you have two things that want to be next to each other, but you want to give them a lot of room and the, right now they're inline, well, go ahead, change it to inline block, and then you can give it a height and a width. And if you have something that's block and you want two of them next to each other, again, no problem change them to inline block, and you can set the width and height. The fourth one, which we don't really use as much, is the idea of display none. And what happens here is if you have an element on your page and you give it display none, it's as if the browser completely ignores that it exists. It's as if it lifted it up and took it out of the page. So these four, the inline, the block, the inline block, and the none, are the ones that we're really going to start playing with at the beginning. So what I have right here is just a simple file that's going to have three span elements, three div elements, and three paragraph elements. If you remember, span elements are inline, so they're only going to take up as much space as they need. Both the divs and the paragraphs, those are block, so they're going to take up more space. On the side over here, what I've done is I've added a little bit of styling, which may or may not make sense when we first talk about it. But I gave each of my spans a height and a width, basically all my elements, a height and a width, and a different background color. So if we were to look at it right now, you would see that I've made all my spans green, all my divs blue, and all my paragraphs a kind of pinkish purple color. And each one lays out exactly by default as how it would go. The reason the divs are as big as they are and the paragraphs are as big as they are is, well again, we put that in our style sheet. You can see my height and my width. If I didn't include these, by default, these divs and paragraphs would take up the whole width of the screen, and they'd be really small, because they would only need enough space to have that text. So let's go ahead and play with this. Normally, I would go into my style sheet, and I would kind of put different things in, try different displays and different things like that. But I'm hoping it'll be a little clearer for you if instead I do this at the same time. So you can follow along with me with what's inspect element, or you can go ahead and change the code in your in your file, save it, refresh, save it, refresh. So I got to inspect element over here by right clicking. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on one of these span elements. Inspect element, and it pops it up for me. Any element on your page you can play with. You can either play with just that particular element you're poking on right there, or I can say I want to play with all the spans. 
So let's look down here. Right now I have a height and a width for each one of my span elements, but they're not actually very big. So how do we change that? If something's inline, but you want to give it a height and a width, we go down to display. And I'm going to go here. And I'm going to try inline block. Boom! Right away, my spans have taken on those properties. So before, when they were inline, they were small. When they're inline block, I can shape them really nicely. And if I change them to just block, you can see now they're on top of each other because block elements don't like to be next to each other. The final property I'm going to show you right here is this idea of none. When you have none, it's as if the spans didn't even exist. You didn't save any space for them. It's not as if you would even know looking at the pages they were ever there. So it's a kind of interesting thing to do and you might use it later if you want things to appear sometimes and not others, but you don't want to leave a big white space. So go ahead and take a second, and I'm just going to click on a few of these other things. So for instance, my divs, I can go and I can say, you know what, I want to make just this one div. I want to go ahead and make it inline block, and let's see what happens. Well, the odd thing is, is I changed it, but nothing actually happened, and I'm kind of wondering if you know why. When you have inline block, you're saying, oh, go ahead and put me next to other people if I fit. But if your neighbors are also block, it's not going to work. So now, instead of changing just one, I'm going to change all the divs. You can see that, oh, because they're 45, uh, about 45 percent, two of them fit next together, but the last one doesn't. So there's really no good way to feel comfortable with display until you take this code and start switching things around. What happens if it's, if it's inline? What happens if it's inline block? What happens if it's span? And pay really close attention to the fact that it's not enough to know what the display is for the one element you're working on. You also need to know the display for its neighbors. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more. When we're talking about display, it's pretty common to also talk about two other properties as well. And these are called float and clear. And what float and clear do is they don't necessarily say where you want the page to be, the element on your page to be specifically, but where you generally want to put it. By default, when the browser is putting things on the page, it starts in the upper right hand corner, sorry, upper left hand corner, and it just starts putting them in. So looking at your site, it'd be like first thing, first thing, oh, the next one's blocked, so I better put it underneath. And it just keeps adding things in. So if your browser is really big, you can fit more span elements next to each other. If it's small, you can fit less. Well, float lets you actually reposition things, and it says, hey, I want you to kind of float this anywhere, and if I say float right, I want you to put it as far to the right as you can. If I say float left, I want you to put it as far left as you can. The other elements are basically aware of one another, and when you use float, they won't overlap, but things are going to look a little bit crazy. And when you add float, again, you're affecting your neighbors because your neighbors need to know where you're going which is why we have this additional property called clear. Because sometimes when you're coding, you want to just make sure that things aren't floating to your left or your right. You want to just, you want really to have that space all to yourself. In which case, you can use clear left, clear right, or clear both. Clear left, make sure there's nothing floating to you on the left. Clear right means there's nothing floating to you on the right. And clear both, well, as you can guess, it means nothing should be floating next to you at all. So let's go ahead and take another look at one more example where I'm going to play with that same code, but I'm going to start using float and clear as well. So we're going to look at the same exact file we were just looking at when I was playing with display block, inline, none, etc. But now we're going to throw float and clear into the mix as well. So here is the code we were looking at, and here's the website. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the spans up here, and I'm going to try floating them. So remember, when you float something, you're basically saying, put it as far over to the side as you can, and the other elements are almost going to exact act as if they're not there, but they're not going to overlap it. So I'm going to go down here, go to my float, say float. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to float it to the left, which means they're not really going to move too much. What I want you to look for is that right now, there's a little bit of space between each one of my spans. When I change it to left, that space goes away and the div actually goes underneath it as well because the uh, spans are on top. 
Now, when I try changing it and floating it right, when I float it right, I want you to notice that not only do they not you know, have space in between them, that they're over, kind of right next to each other again, but if you look, the order of the A, B, and C are different because the first element that's placed on the page is span A, and so it moves it as far to the right as it can. And then when it's doing span B, it's moving as far to the right as it can, and span C as well. So this is kind of something interesting, and you can see that if they're to the left, the divs would overlap them. All right, so let's go ahead and do a few more of these things, and I'm going to do a change all my divs so that they are also, let's go here, float left. So by now, the page is looking kind of crazy because things are going all over the place and you really, you know, you probably don't want it to look this way, particularly if we wanted all of our paragraphs to really be at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to go up here to my paragraphs and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, I'm not going to float these. Instead, I'm going to say, I'm done with floating. Please stop floating things around me. And I'm going to clear both sides. So the paragraphs are now saying, get me away from all this floating craziness. I just want to be down here. Floating, clearing, different things like this. When we do these kind of really simple code examples in the lecture, they're not always going to make as much sense as when you're putting in them in as part of something bigger. But the problem is I can't show you examples of something bigger because you'd all fall asleep about three or four minutes into the code. So go ahead, do what we've always been doing, and just play with these a little bit till you get the idea of what they do. As time goes on, you'll start to figure out when you want them to actually do these, uh, do these kind of actions.